a premium build, competent specs and a low price. That's a combination most budget phone manufacturers are aiming for. Xiaomi, OnePlus and Huawei are few notable competitors in that price segment. While flagship makers battle for the top spot with small bezels and pixel-perfect cameras, Motorola on the other hand are offering desired features on the phone without costing too much. Hey what's up guys, you're watching Explore Gadgets with Ayush and this is the Moto G5 Plus after a month. Let's get right into it. So first things first, this particular model I have here has 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. You can also find one with 2 gigs and 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Now jumping right into the design, Moto G5 Plus has redefined itself from ground up. It takes affordable smartphone design to the next level with a build quality that more closely mimics that of an expensive flagship phone. The metal backplate gives the feel of a premium handset even if it is quite slippery. The rest of the handset is plastic and comes in two colors, a rather too blingy gold version and a more reserved grey. The rather slim earpiece cutout and fingerprint sensor on the front is borrowed from the Moto Z. And buttons and ports are kept at the usual spot. It's good to see that there is a slot for expandable storage and you can pop in a nano SIM card as well. Now one thing I really love about the G5 Plus is the display. Ditching the 5.5 inch display from Moto G4 Plus for a much more manageable 5.2 inch version, Moto really did well with the G5 Plus. And while there is still a clunky bezel running around the display, it's rather comfortable to use with one hand. Well, the 1080p IPS LCD display with 424 ppi produces colors that has great viewing angles and good sunlight visibility. Furthermore, you can switch to a vibrant screen mode which makes the display more saturated and vibrant. As a result, games with a lot of detail and art looks fantastic and watching videos and movies is a pleasant experience. However, I'm not quite satisfied with the built-in speaker since it's pretty average in regards to both volume and audio quality. But I always find myself pairing it with a Bluetooth speaker so that's that. On the other side, the call quality and the microphone is excellent. Under the hood, it's powered by a Snapdragon 625 clocked at 2GHz coupled with the Adreno 506 GPU along with 3 gigs of RAM. Benchmark scores might tell you a different story but when it comes to real life use, everything has been speedy and responsive. It can comfortably handle anything you throw at it and even processor hungry games like Asphalt and Modern Combat are smooth and fast. A perfect addition here is its 3000 mAh battery. Combined with the battery efficiency of Snapdragon 625, you get a pretty impressive battery life. Now even with heavy uses, the device can last up to a whole day with close to 6 hours of screen on time. And even when the battery runs out, you can take advantage of the fast charging. Now the biggest setback here is you don't get NFC in US variants. However, in the international ones, you get them. Now coming to the back, we have the circular camera module with a slight protrusion. However, while on the Moto Z, the camera protrusion served as an anchor point for the Moto mods, this does not seem to be the case with the Moto G5 Plus. Its presence seems to be just for the sake of continuity with no mods available. Talking about the camera, we have a 12 megapixel sensor with a whopping 1.7 aperture and a 1.4 micron pixel size, which makes this camera sound really good but just on paper. Unfortunately, the camera quality of the phone is just average. The large pixel size should have really helped with low light photography despite the device not having OIS. But low light is the weakest point of this camera. The images fall really apart with there being very little detail and a lot of overexposure. On the other side, daytime shooting produces far better shots. The front facing 5 megapixel camera is okay and the selfies are a bit lifeless and murky. Now impressively, Moto did add 4K recording but with lack of OIS, it's useless. Now talking on the software side of things, the Moto G5 Plus is running Android 7.0 Nougat out of the box with a nearly stock Android experience. But few useful Moto tweaks such as ambient display, the double chop action to launch the flashlight and the twist of the wrist to launch the camera are still present. Making its debut here is the inventive one button navigation as well. Once activated, the capacitive navigation buttons that you're used to disappear and shift those duties to the fingerprint sensor. 
And when you move your hand over the phone, a screen lights up and shows notifications and lets you pause music. It's not something mind-blowing, but a nice touch. Even the launcher has been updated with the new folder design and the app drawer now swipes up from the bottom to give you a pixel launcher look and feel. Considering the fact that it's close to stock Android, app switching multitasking is really smooth and lag-free. In a nutshell, the G5 Plus offers superb performance, excellent battery life, a pretty okay camera and a pure version of Android with minimal but useful tweaks. So if you've got $250 to spend on the phone, it should probably be this one. I will also leave some review links down in the description for more cheaper options. So that's it for this video guys, I hope this video helped you make an informed decision on Moto G5 Plus. If you already own one, do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to keep yourself notified. Thanks for watching and you guys have a great day.